There are many ways of expressing a division of two numbers. The most common way is using well, common fractions. We've been doing that. This section deals with other ways of expressing this. Let's say we're given a number line like this. And now I want to divide it into 10 equal parts like this. Now I want to add small pie charts underneath each little tick mark. Dividing whole parts by powers of 10, in other words, you know, 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 and so on, is done so much that we actually have a special way of expressing these fractions. A decimal fraction is any fraction in which the denominator is a power of 10. So a power of 10 is really 10 raised to some power, like 10 to the first is 10, 10 squared is 100, 10 cubes is 1,000, 10 to the fourth is 10,000, so on and so forth. That's all what we mean by that. Decimal fractions can be written in a very special form called decimal form. And here's the pattern. It's going to be an integer. Then you're going to have something that's called a decimal point, followed by a string of digits. Twos, threes, ones, whatever. Now this string of digits can be an infinite string. They can just go on forever or they can stop, you know, five, six, seven, that's it. Now, in some countries of the world, instead of this period that represents the decimal point, they use a comma. But for these videos, I'll always use a point, a period. Now let's go back to our number line and change all our decimal fractions into decimal form. It would look something like this. Now let's do some examples of decimal fractions. Over here, I have 10 cuts, of which I have three slices. So that gives me a fraction of 3 tenths. Now, how can we convert this into a decimal fraction? Well, it's very, very easy. I'll write my decimal point over here. And the numerator, the digits in the numerator, must match the number of zeros down in the denominator. If they don't, we're going to add extra, what I call leading zeros, in front of the 3. In this case, it's, it's fine. I'm going to put the 3 right here. And technically, that's our answer. But I always will put a 0 in front of a decimal if there isn't any other digit, like a 1 or a 2 or a 3 and so on. Why do this? Again, for clarity. It's very easy to lose that decimal point. It's hard to see that. Okay? Or decimal points, if you kind of smudge them, they look like negative threes. So for clarity, you're going to write down, I recommend you do, 0 0.3. To continue, let's look at this right here. Let's say each of these rows represents the whole part. And notice that we have 10 squares in each row. So our denominator is going to be 10. Well, now how many blue squares do we have? Well, if you count them, it looks like we got uh, 17 of them. Well, I can also notice here that uh, we have one whole row. So I'm going to say 1, and we have 7 left over, so we have 7 tenths. Now, I can change this into decimal form by writing down the 1 point. See, it's going to be 7 tenths. One digit here matches the zeros down here, so it's just 7. That is my answer. A good way to represent 100 is something like this. We have 10 down here, and then 10 this way gives us a total of 100 squares. Now let's look at a specific example of how we can create a decimal fraction. Let's use a graphic. Looking over here, we see a certain area that's shaded in green. Well, if you count those squares, you're going to get 25 out of a total of 100. So 25 of the squares were green out of 100. So that means we have 25 out of 100. Now, yes, I can reduce this fraction by one of 
decimal form. So it's going to be 0 0.25. And double check that. The digits on top must match the digits of the zeros on the bottom. So yeah, so we're fine. So this is my answer. Now let's step it up a notch. What if we want to do with a thousand? Well, here's an example. This is a thousand of these little keys right here. So I want to create a decimal fraction with this information. So let's look at a computer graphic for this. So let's say this represents our cube. So this would be what? Well, we have 1,000 plus 200 plus 30 plus 4. Well, that's going to give us 1,234. So if 1,000 is what I'm considering the slices, then 1,234 over 1,000 is really just one whole block, and you have 234 little blocks left over of 1,000 cuts. The decimal form for this would be 1.2. Three, four, and again, the digits on top, two, three, four, matches the number of zeros on the bottom, one, two, three. So, there's our answer. For example 11, I want to rewrite this fraction in decimal form. Well, how do we do that? Well, notice that right here, I don't have enough digits to match the number of zeros down below. So I'm going to include what's I like to call a leading zero right there. So now they match. So this is equal to 0 0.037, 37 thousandths. A percentage is a fraction whose denominator is 100. By the way, the word percentage comes from the Latin word percentum, which means by a hundred. Now this type of grid is actually pretty handy to represent percentages in a graphical form. Let's actually do that with the computer. Now look at this image. How many of the squares are shaded? 32 of them. So let's try to find a percentage out of that. So we had 32 parts out of 100. Now to make this into a percentage, all you have to do is write down the numerator over again, 32, and put the percent symbol right there. And that is our answer, 32%. Now we don't have to always use some kind of a grid. Any collection of 100 objects can be used to represent percentage. For example, look at this group of stars. 27 of them are shaded. So we can write down 27 stars out of 100 stars. Since our denominator is 100, that automatically can be easily represented as percentage. So this is just 27 percent. For example, 12, I like to express this graph as a percentage. Let's give it a shot. Well, what's going on here? If you notice carefully, there was 61 total shaded squares out of 100. So it's just going to be 61 percent. A ratio is a comparison between the sizes of quantities of the same type. The value of a ratio is the quotient or fraction of the quantities. So if I want the ratio, let's say, of A to B, how can I represent that? Well, the way you do that is you say A to B. Or you can write it as a fraction, A to B. Now when you're saying ratios, you should use the word to. So I don't say A over B or A divided by B. I would say A to B because I'm referring to a ratio.
ratios are always expressed in lowest terms. So something like this, 5 to 10, well, temporarily write it like a fraction, 5 tenths, reduce your fraction, a half, but really we don't want to say half, so this becomes 1 to 2. And this is a proper way of expressing this ratio right here. For this example, I like to find the ratio of red disks to blue ones. So I have one, two, three, four red disks, four red disks to how many blue ones? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six blue disks. Well, I don't really need the words red, blue, and discs and stuff, so this is really just 4 to 6, but it's not reduced. So this is the same thing as saying 2 thirds, which we're going to rewrite as 2 to 3. And that is my answer. For exercise 19, I'd like you to write the decimal fraction and the decimal form for this representation of the pizza slices. Not the blank spots, but the pizza. So how many slices do we have? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this becomes seven tenths. The decimal form of this would be 0 0.7. If each large rectangle represents the whole part, I'd like you to now write a decimal fraction and its decimal form right now. Well, we have one, two whole parts, and just one out of the 10 over here is green. So we can now change that to 2.1. Here we have a thousand cubes. If I let's say, oh, remove three of them from here, what's the decimal fraction and the decimal form of these three little cubes in relation to the thousand? Well, let's see. We have three out of a thousand. That's going to be my decimal fraction. I have to create the decimal form. I only have one digit on top and three zeros on the bottom. So I'm going to add a couple of leading zeros here. So my answer is going to be 0 0.003. Again, this matches this number right here. Well, I took out three cubes from here. So I want you to write down the decimal fraction and decimal form of what's left over. What does all of this now represent since I took three of them out? Well, if we took out three cube, we have 997 out of 1,000 left over. This is going to be my decimal fraction. Decimal form is going to be 0 point. Well, the number of digits on top match the number of zeros on bottom, so I'm going to have 997. 997 thousandths. For exercise 20, I want you to rewrite all these fractions in decimal form. Let's get started. So the first one here is just going to be 0 0.8. For this one, it's going to be 0 0.47. Over here, 0 0.501. Uh, what about this last one here? Well, let's make things easier. This is just 2. And you can leave it like that. That's your decimal form. Now I want you to put these in decimal form. Again, this one's a little sneaky. Well, for the top one here, it's going to be 0. Point 
and see the number of digits on top that match the zeros on the bottom, so I'm going to have a leading zero right here. So this would be my answer. You might say, well, that isn't a power of 10 in the denominator. Well, let's make it. To do that, 5 times what will give you a power of 10? That's easy to deal with. How about 5 times 2 is 10? So what do you do on the bottom? You do on top. So I get 4. Once it's in this form, it's going to be easy to do. It's 0 0.4. For exercise 21, I'd like you to shade the portion of this graph that represents 20%. Well, the answer, all you need to do is shade this portion right here. I just want to let you know that isn't the only solution. There's lots of ways of representing 20%. As long as 20 of these squares are shaded in, that's an answer. Here's another example. So leave it like the first solution I gave you. For exercise 22, I want you to express this shaded area as a percentage. Well, we only have two blocks out of 100 that are shaded, so that's just 2%. For exercise 23, I'd like you to find the ratio of boys to girls. Well, boys. How many are there? We have one, two of them. So there's two boys for every one, two, three, four girls. And let's actually reduce our fraction. So this is really one to two. And let's rewrite that as one to two. If you left the answer like this, that's fine. But we're dealing with ratios. You, you should use a ratio notation.